Well, I want to follow up on the show that you had a lot of success very early. Yeah. You know, by the time you were 22, you were an established star. And now that, you know, you have time to think about it, how does that affect you to get so much so early in contrast to Patrick, which had all these odd jobs and had a difficult time making it? Yours was a different career story, if you will, 17 <laughs> to 22, and you're a superstar. And then suddenly it all seemed to go away. Patrick always teases me because he's worked every odd job growing up and, you know, trying to get by. And he tells me stories of just, you know, getting in the van after show after show, loading up all his stuff and how exhausting it was. And I say, well, you know, my first job was <laughs> making an album that went to the top of the charts. And I was touring around on a tour bus with, you know, a crew of people taking care of everything for me. So our history in that regard is, is very different. But I think, so I, I grew up in, you know, small, in Northern Arizona, small town, and I, the only thing I wanted to do was to be a musician. And I had plans to, you know, maybe go to music school or something, because no one ever expects to get offered a record deal in their teen years. But I was playing local fairs, I was playing PTA dinners, I was playing Girl Scout meetings. Um, and my parents, I have to say, my dad's a plumbing contractor. My mom was managing a restaurant. They weren't like stage parents at all. They were just kind of didn't know what to do with me. And I got a call from a friend of ours who was a timeshare salesman down the street in Sedona. And she said, someone from the music business is here. You need to come down here with a tape. And my parents were at work, so I borrowed my neighbor's golf cart. And I drove down there, and I waited at the resort for him. And I gave him a tape and he ended up listening to it on his drive back to Los Angeles and called me. And the next thing I know, I'm recording uh, demos to pitch to record labels and I was opening up for bands in California. And the whole thing happened so quickly that I really had no time to kind of process. And I, I knew immediately that I didn't want to be famous. I just wanted to play music and I could see, you know, peers of mine who were tabloid darlings and started kind of going down that road and I was like, whoa, pump the brakes, I'm going to make music and I want to be known for my music and yeah, it worked out. Well then what, what did happen is she made this record that was in kind of Americana and influenced and the label that put out her records refused to release it which is just something I can't relate to because in my life, we send a record into our record label and they are excited to have it no matter what. This is back when we weren't selling records, they were just pumped. We always had that type of support. But there's a different type of expectation from her. I think when you have the amount of success that I initially had, people can't help themselves but hope to repeat it. And, you know, the, the success I had was in 2001 when people were buying records and it was a totally different well, world. I mean, the th I'm not just saying this because I'm married to Michelle. I've worked with a lot of musicians. I'm in a band with one who's a, you know incredibly talented. Michelle is as talented as, as the most talented musicians I've ever worked with. She has way more talent than I do, that's for sure. Um, so when it, she just wants to make music and when there was these expe expectations of pop stardom still, I think that that's where things fell off track. Yeah. So we've really kind of, uh, we bonded over, over <laughs> this underdog status. <laughs> yeah.